that you lose you. Uh, welcome, Sarah Renabel, candidate for King County District 4 Council Member. This is our interview, and we will go right into it. The first question will be... Sorry, introduction. Oh, first introduction first. Uh, yeah, go for it. Right. Do, the, do the overview, please. Thank you, Thundering 36, for having me. My name is Sarah Reineveld. I'm running for King County Council in District 4. Some of you know me as the former chair of the Thundering 36. I am also a public sector attorney, proud mom of two, Seattle public school parent, transit writer, union organizer, and community advocate. I have dedicated my 15-year public service career to advancing public policy, legal, and budgetary solutions to some of our greatest challenges. As a managing attorney general for assistant attorney general for the over 10 years, I have fought for wages and for protections for working families. I've held environmental violators accountable, and I've worked internally to unionize our staff. As a member of the King County Women's Advisory Board since 2016, I have worked with communities and the King County Council to help secure investments in housing, behavioral health, childcare, and services for survivors of gender-based violence. I wanna continue my track record of working collaboratively with communities to advance progressive solutions on the King County Council. I am running because we need bold and transformative action at all levels of government to meet the urgency of this moment. The pandemic and now the shadow pandemic has laid bare inequities in King County. As your next county council member, I will work with communities across King County to create a more equitable and sustainable future by meeting the behavioral health needs of our neighbors in crisis, by creating more truly affordable housing, providing access to fast, safe, and reliable transit for all, tackling the climate crisis and protecting our environment and reimagining our criminal legal system. I am proud to be the only candidate in this race, oh, is that time, um, who's endorsed by AG Bob Ferguson, Hillary Franz, County Council Member Colwells, and many others. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now we'll do the prepared questions that you've received, and Shep will do the first one. Uh, the county budget is mostly reliant on sales tax and property tax for its revenues. How can the county make its revenue more progressive? Yes, the county budget is too reliant on sales and property tax. I want to help lead on the King County Council by working with communities to pass more progressive taxation options at the local level that ensure that big businesses and our wealthiest individuals are paying their fair share and relieve the taxation burden on working and fixed income neighbors. As a community advocate, as a parent, as a board member of Washington's Paramount Duty, I have joined a coalition of progressive leaders to advocate for progressive revenue to fix our upside down tax code, including the top capital gains tax. And I wanna bring that organizing experience and my legal and budgetary skills to first advocate to the legislature to obtain local jurisdiction taxation authority at the county level to impose an excise tax on big business that is similar to the Seattle Jumpstart tax. So similar legislation was proposed in 2020, um, which would have given King County the taxation authority to tax big business with highly paid employees, but that did not pass the legislature, unfortunately. So I'd like to work uh, with state legislators and my King County Council members and communities to get that over the finish line to ensure that county businesses outside of Seattle are paying their fair share and we don't have an uneven playing field. Second, I want to work with legislators to lift the 1% property tax limit and to make the property tax la less regressive by finally passing a real homestead exemption and continuing to expand the exemptions in place for seniors and people with disabilities and veterans. Third, the county has to spend billions of dollars on updates. Oh, all right. I would just uh, like to add and end on saying I want to I want to use my uh, platform as well to help pass an income tax. Wealth tax. So um, you, the timer, if you can't see it, 
you might have to scroll left or right to get okay. the timer up. And you got 10, you get a 10 second ding and then a final. All right, I cannot so, see it. So I'm gonna make sure that I can. Just move your, move a arrow one way or the other there. Okay, sounds good, thank you. You're welcome. And <clears throat> uh, Jeannie will ask about Metro. Yeah, please share your vision for King County Metro and how you will ensure that Seattle will have efficient, safe, connected, reliable, and regular transit. As part of this, we would like to know how you will address the impacts of the pandemic and the shifting work patterns. Yes, uh, so as a public transit writer and a union member, I'm running to be a transit leader on the King County Council. My vision for transit is driven by the conversations that I've had in community. People want Metro Transit to be fast, they want it to be frequent, reliable, and safe, and zero emission, and they want service that is free for those that can't afford to ride. So right now, as we know, Metro Transit is in crisis. It has been languishing since the pandemic. Ridership has fallen by half, and riders have been saddled with delays and canceled routes, and that disproportionately impacts our BIPOC communities as well as low-income communities, seniors, youth, and others that rely on transit. So we, we have to do better. Here's what I wanna do if elected. First, I'm committed to working with a growing coalition. I've already been working in coalition with transit writers and groups like the Transit Writers Union, Seattle Subway and the Urbanists to put a countywide transit revenue package on the ballot potentially in 2024 to fund a King Countywide Transportation Benefit District to help restore and expand Metro service. Second, I wanna prioritize the recruitment and retention of bus operators and mechanics to address the severe shortage. So as a union member, I have had numerous conversations with the Amalgamated Transit Unit un, uh, un, Union, and I really um, want to elevate their issues, um, including ensuring that we have increased incentives, pay, safety measures, and supports to build and expand the pipeline of operators. If, elect, if elected, I want to make uh, restoring and expanding transit a top priority and work with those most impacted to ensure that King County has fast, safe, reliable, and convenient transit for all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. You had 10 more seconds. Um, Laura Marie will now ask the next question. So the King County Council will be responsible for oversight and implementation of the crisis care centers levy. How will you ensure the placement of the centers is equitable and has support from the local community? And how will you ensure that the levy is a connected, coherent step toward a broader system to uphold mental health and address behavioral health? So first, I will ensure that the placement of the centers is equitable and centers communities with the greatest need through establishing a community work group and also a robust community engagement that centers the voices that are most impacted, uh, particularly BIPOC, immigrant, and other communities who have been really disproportionately impacted by behavioral health, um, as well as substance use crises. Our campaign is proud to be endorsed by Councilmember Gramai Zahle, who really helped lead the way in our levy design. And to paraphrase him, I believe that the best public policy implementation is led and serves those that are closest to the pain. So the current plan is to distribute the crisis care centers in four subregions. Um, across the county and, and one's supposed to be youth focused. So I think we need to do more to ensure that those with lived experience um, are ensuring that the placement of those centers are equitable, accessible, and serve the communities that are closest to the pain with the greatest needs. Second, I wanna work directly with communities and to lift up community voices in the fourth council district and across King County to obtain community support by engaging in a robust stakeholder process, which includes adequate notice of the crisis centers, public participation, and community engagement, and a, a robust discussion around siting, around appropriate architectural screening, and discharge plans. I would say finally, while the crisis care proposal is a really critically important step in addressing our behavioral health crisis, it will not in itself solve the decades long underinvestment in treatment beds and in, beha in our behavioral 
So I want to lead in this space by working with legislators and our county colleagues to create more treatment beds and invest in the pipeline behavioral health providers. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, finally, Amanda will ask a jail question. Six people have died at the King County Jail over the last year. What will you do to address overcrowding and safety at the jail and, and any other private facilities contracted by King County? Please respond to this question within the context of your broader perspective and values around the criminal legal system and public safety. Yeah, thanks for this question. So as a public sector attorney who has worked in the criminal legal system, I am running for King County Council because I want to help lead King County's work to reimagine our criminal legal system root out racial disparities and invest in upstream and restorative justice alternatives. The deaths and the condition at the King County Jail are unconsciousable and they show that the King County Council is not providing sufficient oversight. I am committed to investing in immediate solutions to address the overcrowding, the excessive use of solitary confinement and delays in medical treatment and eventually to actualize the vision of closing the downtown jail. If elected, I will work to first prevent and reduce incarceration through investing in upstream alternatives and investments in youth and vulnerable adults and expansion of existing and new uh, diversion programs. I want to work to ensure that King County is increasing investments in housing and behavioral health and expanding effective diversion programs that work, such as the Law Enforcement Assisted Diversion Program, which is a pre-arrest diversion program for folks with unmet behavioral health needs and also our co-lead program. I wanna address the immediate crisis at the jail through investments in adequate staffing, in behavioral health, in substance use disorder services and harm reduction programs that really root out the cause of why people are causing harm and incarcerated to begin with. And I wanna to move towards actualizing this vision of closing the downtown jail and reimagining and reducing the size of King County Correctional Centers. The jail is obsolete. We know that it's failing too many vulnerable individuals and we must work towards upstream alternatives to reduce incarceration and work towards the eventual closure of the downtown jail. I am proud to be endorsed by Lisa Dugard, by King County Councilmember Gramai Zahalai and former <laughs> Councilmember Rossett and others who have been leading in this space. And I want to work with them directly to truly reimagine our public safety system, our criminal legal system. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, I was, they we're gonna do follow-up questions. Raise your hands and Jeremy's hand is up. Hi, uh, you mentioned several, uh, multiple times your goal of closing the downtown jail. What about, the other jails, and in particular, the privately owned facilities that King County is currently contracting with? Yeah, I think that's an excellent question. Um, so I, I think that we know that the downtown jail, unfortunately, is, you know, is obsolete and is failing too many uh, criminally involved individuals. And so I think it has to be our priority to focus on closing the downtown jail first. There is, um, you know, a population in the the jail facilities currently that are awaiting felony trial, and, you know, for those those percentage of the population, we probably do have to have some sort of facility until we can completely revise our our criminal legal system. And so, um, I think we need to prioritize spaces that uh, embrace restorative justice, ensure that there's adequate staffing. Um, and, you know, ensure that the individual civil rights of those that are in the systems uh, are being upheld. Do we have any other follow-up questions? Uh, Amanda. Yeah, you mentioned um, COVID and the pandemic and uh, the sort of shadow pandemic, which I guess is what we're calling the, uh, the cessation of emergency declarations and um, as we've seen funds uh, nationally and state and other kinds of things dry up because of the ending of those emergency orders, how will we safeguard folks in King County, particularly because the impact of this is in inequitable? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a great question. And it also goes back to what more we can do to ensure that we're 
uh, investing and providing alternatives for progressive revenue. I think we need to look at lifting the 1% property tax cap, um, as well as looking at taxing big business so we can have sufficient revenue. I also think we need to look uh, through an equity lens at prioritizing those services for our disproportionately impacted communities. That includes behavioral health, that includes housing, and um, that includes investments in some of these upstream alternatives. And so I'm gonna fight to ensure that we are continuing to invest in communities at King County and prioritize the communities again, that are closest to the pain, um, that that need you know, services to ensure that we have truly an equitable recovery. So, thank you. Uh, Laura Marie. Hi again. Uh, can you tell us something that you are, an aspect of this job that you are really looking forward to and or something that you think a lot of people don't know or might not have realized? Yes, an aspect of the job that I'm really looking forward to. I have been a longtime environmental advocate and I am a managing assistant attorney general now in the environmental protection division. And I think we need stronger leadership and response to the climate crisis and, and investing in uh, efforts to protect our environment, our land, our air and our water for future generations. So I wanna be a climate champion and forward environmental justice on the King County Council. I think the thing that folks may not know that I am really interested in is I, as an, as an attorney and someone that's worked in the criminal legal system, I'm very interested in what more we can do to reimagine our criminal legal system, root out racial disparities and invest in upstream alternatives. And I think we need someone that can work with disproportionately impacted communities to help lead in this space. And I, I want to work do that work in, in a combination with my colleagues and those that are most impacted. Well, thank you for that. <clears throat> Not seeing any other hands, uh, I think we have time for at least one more, and I will ask one. No, I'll let Sherry go. Go ahead. Sorry. Um... You've mentioned several times that you want to reimagine the criminal justice system. Could you give us like one or two examples, specific examples of what you have in mind? Yeah, absolutely. As I stated before, I think preventing and reducing incarceration through upstream alternatives in youth and vulnerable adults, I think is critically important. And that means a significant expansion in programs such as diversion programs, such as the law assisted uh, uh, enforcement assisted diversion program, the co-lead program, community passageways, other programs that really divert and invest in upstream alternatives um, to the criminal legal system. I think, you know, we need to move towards the traditional, move away from the traditional system of kind of a carceral punishment. I think that that is something that's not proven to be effective. I think jails are the most costly and probably least effective uh, use of, of public dollars. And so the more that we can invest those public dollars into housing, into behavioral health, and to diversion that's more effective, um, those are the solutions I'm going to be looking towards as a King County. So I'm not seeing any other hands except mine. I will ask one. And this is this is maybe a little bit in a different direction. How do you propose to win this election? What is your campaign strategy for doing that? Yeah, I think that's a great question. So, um, you know, we are running a really strong grassroots campaign, and I am so kind of impressed and also humbled by the support that we have in the district thus far. Uh, we have endorsements from Councilmember Colwells as well as Fred Fellman, many of the King County Council members, my boss, AG Bob Ferguson. And I think to that speaks to the fact that, you know, my both record of leadership and also my invest, my uh, message about investing in community is something that is really compelling and, and really is resonating with voters. So um, we're gonna continue to highlight the support we have in community. We're going to focus on getting out the vote. I have had uh, many conversations with my boss, AG Ferguson, about you know, what more we can do to have a really robust ground game campaign. And I think many of, of campaigns on at this level, it, it comes down to voter contact. And so I look forward to, to hitting the doors and engaging in, with voters. 
Well, thank you for uh, a very robust interview. And uh, uh, Jeremy, we're out of time, but it's your we've, turn. We've got to... one minute. Um... There, it's okay, set go ahead. Go, go ahead. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll so I just want to ask: Do you have anything else you'd like to tell us? Yes. One minute. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think that I wasn't asked a question about the environment, and so, you know, I want to be an environmental leader besides transit, and that's part of it. But I'm really looking forward to doing more to decarbonize our built environment through the adoption of commercial building codes. Um, that require, you know, reduced energy use and, and looking at kind of transitioning off um, eventually, uh, you know, there's kind of a focus on, on carbonization. And so I think that's critically important. I want to do more to sustainably manage forests. I want to expand kind of equitable pathways to green apprenticeships and jobs. So I'm really excited about digging in and doing more uh, to combat and really address our climate crisis and protect our environment for future generations. So that's a priority of something I'm looking forward to working on the King County Council. Okay, now the recording can turn off.